Hi folks, welcome back. Thanks for joining. So today, uh, is a, it's a rather unique video, at least the beginning of it is, and uh, I have a huge announcement. I got an email from uh, YouTube, and I've reached uh, a million views. Can you believe that? Uh, me piddling around. So, uh, <laughs> that's what I get for sticking with it, I guess. So I'm, I'm, I'm grateful, I'm humble. And uh, you folks have been fantastic. I, your comments, uh, your likes, uh, I've loved every single one of your comments. Uh, so I'm, um, I'm blessed in that regard and that I have a great audience. So thank you so much. And uh, I'm going to pass along something big, uh, a million views. Well, and uh, I'm getting to the point where uh, some things are not as important <laughs> as they used to be. Uh, so I'm going to pass along something. And the reason is, is because there's another milestone at the same point as my million views. And that is that uh, methane in the atmosphere has reached the same level as it was during the last ice age. During the last ice age. So everything in the atmosphere all conditions necessary for winter not to end for a thousand years are present in the atmosphere right now. So um, we really need to uh, get on with uh, saving our little blue ball if we're going to do it at all. So uh, I'm going to sh share and I'm going to pitch in my part too. And that is I'm going to share with you folks uh, something very close to me that I've been holding on to for years and years and years and I'm going to share it with you now. Uh, EVs will never work and there's a couple of reasons why. Uh, hydrogen will never work either and there's a couple of really big reasons why as well. But they all stem from the same problem. The problem EVs and hydrogen won't work is because industry is simply waiting for they're not going to give it to us until they can make uh, 50 bucks a week from us. And that's how they're going to present it to us. And there's, that's, the, that's the focus right now. Everything that's coming out there, uh, EVs need charging and charging stations are not free. And hydrogen needs hydrogen, and hydrogen fueling stations are not free either. As a matter of fact, they're really expensive. But they tell us that this economy is going to be beneficial for the future. And that's wrong. Because of the way that they're presenting us, they're this energy carrier of electricity and hydrogen. And that is, these two energy carriers are now being produced in greater quantities with coal and natural gas. Raising the amount of coal that we're using, uh, it's actually going up and so is the level of CO2 and so is the level of methane. And it's because of the way that they're presenting these great new earth-friendly options of electric cars and hydrogen cars to us, they're actually hurting the environment even more so that they can make that 50 bucks a week. So I'm going to give away an idea. I'm going to give away a few of them, and we're going to work on some stuff here on uh, EVs. We're going to make them work. We're going to make them work for free. We're going to work on hydrogen, and we're going to make it work for free too. Well, we need water. So the, the, uh, the EV, we're going to need the sun. So now the caveat to all of this is that energy storage is still the golden egg. Uh, so we don't have good storage options. And, but we're going to work on those. We're also going to become more realistic on how we produce our energy and how we store it. And we're going to explore all of these things in a series of videos coming. So I hope you folks will join me in this where we're going to get serious and uh, 
first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to make a solar panel that will produce considerably more energy than what's being produced now. So uh, to make it an option for EVs. All right, there's the teaser right there. Well, not just a solar cell, um, a solar panel, not just a solar panel, but one with enough energy density to actually charge um, EV batteries in a very short period of time. So that's what we're gonna work on. And, uh, I mean, uh, EV, I, it just, I just boggles my mind how people, uh, they, they, they want to do the right thing, you know. They want to buy an EV that's good for the planet. But the response from uh, industry was, sure, we'll just burn more coal to give you the extra electric. I, uh, I have a fair bit of confidence in photovoltaics uh, because uh, not only can they be uh, produced with uh, boron and phosphorus on silicon wafers, uh, but they can also be produced uh, with uh, smearing blackberries on carbon. So um, there's a long future for photovoltaics and not so much for any other energy source. So uh, logically, um, we should be focusing on photovoltaics and electric vehicles. So uh, my goal is to produce a, uh, a solar panel with a, uh, enough energy density in it to uh, be able to charge an EV, a reasonable built EV in a short amount of time. And so that's what we're going to focus on in the next video. So when it comes to electric vehicles, there's, there's the other trap, and that is that everybody is promoting the 300 mile range of their EVs. And, um, the 300 mile range is actually, it's a leftover from uh, your gasoline car when those ranges were 300 miles. And the reason they have a 300 mile range is so that you don't have to go to the gas station every day. So it's arbitrary and they're carrying it over. So now you don't have to charge up once a week, uh, the same thing. And it's going to take more time. If you can find a place to plug in, uh, here, are the, here are a couple of the numbers. We have 25 million chargers worldwide. Uh, that's how many have been installed. And uh, we're not going to talk about the ones that are not working. They break down as well. So 25 million. And for some reason, each one of them costs $150,000 each to install. And I can imagine the trickle down all the way through the grid to be able to beef it up enough to handle a charger or two or four. These things take 60 to 100 amps. A house runs on 100 amps, just to give you an idea. So a small house, uh, well, most homes can run on 100 amp service. And now we're talking about doubling that to charge a car. We don't have the grid for it, so 150,000 requires the wiring all the way back to the source where it's being generated. And if you add that up, it's $2.7 trillion. And I think that's where the government took a look at that and says, wait a minute now. In the United States alone, last year there were 12 million new cars. 12 million. And there's only 25 million chargers worldwide. We're running behind. And with this mandate of EVs within the next 10 years, we just... It's, it's just an impossible task. The government can't afford it. <laughs> and the industry certainly can't afford it. So uh, it's, that's why Biden went on TV and talked about, uh, okay, let's, let's make them hybrids for now until we figure out how to install all of these chargers. This is all still group thinking. Okay, with the motivation behind, uh, the motivation is profit. How can we keep making you pay $50 a week to fuel your car? That's the motivation. So they're waiting till they can install enough chargers. And these chargers, you know, zip your credit card and fill her up. That's how it's going to be. There's another way. If we unthink 
the electric vehicle and rethink it in practical terms. Now in practical terms, you only drive. 90% of people only drive less than 10 miles a day to and from work. Of that greater, higher percentage, a great percent of them drive 10 miles one way. So that's 20 miles a day. And we have an EV that's 300 mile range. But we also have the ability to, that car sitting there all day doing nothing. We're going to make the car do some work while it's sitting there doing nothing. That's the whole premise behind my series. So let's, uh, I hope you follow along. Let's get going on this and i uh, probably talked way too much. Don't know how I'm ever going to edit all this. So uh, that's where we're going. So thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye now.